after discussing the adrenergic agonists in the previous four lectures, now it's time to discuss the adrenergic antagonists. The adrenergic antagonists are also known as adrenergic blockers or sympatholytics, are those agents that bind reversibly or irreversibly to adrenergic receptors, but do not trigger the usual receptor-mediated intracellular effects. They are divided to two main groups, the alpha receptors antagonists, and the beta receptors antagonists. And each group is further subdivided to non-selective and selective agents. In this lecture we'll discuss the alpha receptors antagonists. The lecture's PDF will be down in the description. So let's start. We already know that alpha-1 receptors are located in the blood vessels. When activated by endogenous catecholamines or agonists it produces vasoconstriction, increasing peripheral resistance and blood pressure. So we can conclude that blocking alpha adrenal receptors mainly affects blood pressure, resulting in decreased peripheral vascular resistance, and this induces a reflex tachycardia resulting from the lowered blood pressure. The non-selective alpha adrenal receptors antagonists are, phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine. Phenoxybenzamine binds covalently to both alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors, so the block is irreversible and non-competitive, and the only way the body can overcome the block is to synthesize new adrenoceptors, and that may require a day or longer. So the actions of phenoxybenzamine last for about 24 hours. After the drug is injected, a delay of a few hours occurs before a blockade develops. On the other hand, Phentolamine is a reversible competitive blocker for alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors, it lasts for approximately 4 hours after a single injection. Both agents block alpha-1 receptors, preventing vasoconstriction of peripheral blood vessels by endogenous catecholamines, so decreasing peripheral resistance, which provokes a reflex tachycardia. They also block presynaptic inhibitory alpha-2 receptors in the heart resulting in more norepinephrine release, which stimulates beta-1 receptors on the heart, increasing cardiac output. And both agents produce what is called, epinephrine reversal, all alpha adrenergic blockers reverse the alpha agonist actions of epinephrine. For example, we already know from the previous lectures that epinephrine acts on alpha-1 receptors in the blood vessels causing vasoconstriction, and also acts on beta-2 in the skeletal muscles blood vessels causing vasodilatation. So by using the non-selective alpha antagonists, the vasoconstrictive action of epinephrine is interrupted, but vasodilation due to beta-2 receptors is not blocked. So in the presence of phenoxybenzamine or phentolamine, the systemic blood pressure decreases in response to epinephrine. And we can conclude that the actions of norepinephrine are not reversed but are diminished, because norepinephrine has only alpha-1 the suppressor action, and lacks significant beta agonist action on the vasculature. And they have no effect on the actions of isoproterenol, which is a pure beta agonist. Phenoxybenzamine is used in the treatment of pheochromocytoma, which is a catechulamine secreting tumor of cells derived from the adrenal medulla. It is sometimes effective in treating Raynaud disease, and frostbite. Phentolamine is used for the short-term management of pheochromocytoma. It is also used locally to prevent dermal necrosis following extravasation of norepinephrine. Phentolamine is also useful to treat hypertensive crisis. Their adverse effects are similar, both cause postural hypotension, and both induce tachycardia that is mediated by the baroreceptor reflex and by blocking the alpha-2 receptors, as we mentioned before. So they should be used with caution in patients with cardiovascular disease, and they are not useful in the treatment of hypertension. Phenoxybenzamine can cause nasal stuffiness, nausea, and vomiting. It may also inhibit ejaculation. Let's now talk about the selective blockers for alpha-1 receptors. Prazosin, terazosin, and doxazosin are selective competitive blockers of the alpha-1 receptor, so all of these agents decrease peripheral vascular resistance and lower blood pressure. They cause minimal changes in cardiac output, renal blood flow, and glomerular filtration rate. So we can conclude that they are used in the treatment of hypertension. 
The first dose of these drugs may produce an exaggerated orthostatic hypotensive response. This action is known as first dose effect. It can be minimized by adjusting the first dose to one third or one fourth of the normal dose and by giving the drug at bedtime. Tamsulosin and alfiozosin are other selective alpha-1 antagonists indicated for the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia. They are more selective for alpha-1A receptors in the prostate and bladder, so they decrease tone in the smooth muscle of the bladder neck and prostate, improving urine flow, with the least effect on blood pressure because it is less selective for alpha-1B receptors found in the blood vessels. Alpha-1 blockers such as brazosin and doxazosin may cause dizziness, a lack of energy nasal congestion, headache, drowsiness and orthostatic hypotension but lesser than that observed with phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine. They may also cause inhibition of ejaculation and retrograde ejaculation. And the last agent we'll talk about is a selective competitive alpha-2 blocker, it is called yohimbine. It is found as a component of the bark of the yohimb tree and has been used as a sexual stimulant and in the treatment of erectile dysfunction. It works at the level of the CNS to increase sympathetic outflow to the periphery. It is contraindicated in cardiovascular disease, psychiatric conditions and renal dysfunction. That's all for this video, if that was useful for you please leave like or comment. In the upcoming lecture we'll discuss the beta-adrenergic antagonists, so subscribe if it's your first time here, and keep following us.